right. Hi, Lily. Hi, Anna. <laughs> well, why did someone lose their job at Pixar Cinema? I don't know, Anna. Why did someone lose their job at Pixar Cinema? They forgot to show up. Cue intro. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's a horrible joke. I'm so sorry. Also to anyone listening. I love it. It's meant to be more kitschy than... Okay. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Liliana's pre-read Mediatek. I'm Anna. And I'm Lily. Okay. Um, yeah. We wanted to introduce ourselves and what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. Shit, sorry. There's just like a mosquito flying into my face. Uh, yeah, we're currently sat outside. Um, so hopefully there's not too much background noise. There's a car just driving by over there. Just for the sake of this recording. Also, we just almost got hit by our... Oh, a cricket ball. Cricket ball, yes. Yeah, it's, it's summertime. <laughs> I don't know how to say, like, oh my god, this is how we met, because I met you by you sitting in the kitchen. Yeah, we <laughs> met, like, yeah. Oh, we bonded over, like, witch peas, basically. Yes, that's yeah, true. so we're, we're flatmates at the moment. Yes. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't well, know how we Harry started. Potter. Yeah, yeah. Or the discourse around Harry Potter better yet. At yes. this point. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I don't know how we managed to start talking about witch bees. I think you maybe mentioned like, oh, do you like any podcasts? And I was like, oh, do you know witch bees? And then you were like, yes, yes, I do. And I'm just looking yeah. perplexed because I'm not sure why that was brought up because I don't think I've ever before ever asked anybody else, like, hey, do you like podcasts? Maybe you were listening to oh, yeah. one or something. Oh, yeah, or you were or something. Yeah, yeah, it probably came, yeah. Yeah, probably that yeah, way. Yeah. I usually always have my earphones in my ears just to like block the world out. Yeah. <laughs> There was a movie playing quite near our house yesterday and everybody else was like, it's so loud. And I didn't notice it because I didn't hear it because I had my earphones in and I did something else. It was quite loud, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that's how we met through podcasts and we're here today to have our own podcast. Yes. It's very exciting. After months of nonstop talking about media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spending like hours in the kitchen just talking about movies, movies and TV shows yeah. and books and stuff also um, not the most social person and Lily was so nice to like for the whole flat sort of be like hey do you want to do like a movie night do you guys want to like hang out at some point in the weekend and I was like oh god no and then I participated and I was like oh my god this is so fun <laughs> yeah and we've now seen quite a lot of movies together yeah it was yeah it's really good oh my god I just realized the first thing I think we watched together was cats, it was cats. yeah it was <laughs> So I'm glad you stuck around and that was not just the end. It was like, and then we never spoke to each other again. But it was also my idea too. Like, I was like, I don't know what to watch. It was for Halloween. We yeah. were like, yeah, we don't want to watch a horror I film. Think that's we don't like horror. Cats, yeah. But like, oh, Cats is scary enough. Like, we'll watch that. We'll get drunk, watch Cats. I'm not quite sure we were drunk enough, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think I was. No. <laughs> the only thing I remember about that movie is that I like the railway cat. Oh, Because yeah. it was like a good beat and a good song. I do remember the railway cat. And the rest of it is just a blur of like... <laughs> When is this going to end? I don't understand what's going on. What the fuck is a Chalico cat? Sorry, this is not about cats. This, uh, yeah, podcast. we will probably not be... We won't, will we? Be talking about cats on this podcast. Please, no. I don't want to watch that movie I wanna, again. No. I wouldn't mind watching... There's a stage recording. I don't mind wa watching that at some point. Uh, I was in a production of Cats one time. I don't really want to go near it. you? Oh, it was just like... I was like in the chorus. I wasn't like a... It was a weird sort of thing that you kind of had to pay to be a part of. And if you, you had to pay more to be like a main character. Yeah, it was weird. And it was, it was really bad and yeah it was just not a great experience all around which is another reason why I hate cats yeah not the animal we're both <laughs> no huge, we do <laughs> huge cat fans <laughs> yeah um, so the reason it's called a pre-read Mediatek is because you're British I'm German Mediatek I don't know do you guys say the same word Mediatek what does it mean <laughs> it's a library of media yeah, yeah I don't think we say me I I'm not sure I know a word for a library of media apart from like a, yeah, maybe media library? I don't know. It's yeah. sort of like the BBC iPlayer is the Mediatek. Oh, the BBC I guess Mediatek. Like database? I don't, yeah, probably database maybe, but yeah. like, yeah, just iPlayer. I'm yeah. not sure we have a specific word. So a lot of German channels have this on their website, like the BBC iPlayer, so you can just watch the stuff that they've had on TV for the last week. Yeah. But I thought of, I liked it because we want to talk about whatever kind of media we want to, mm -hmm. even though we're going to talk about a lot of movies. We're going to be talking about stuff from a queer feminist lens. Yeah. yeah. But we also wanted to talk about TV and talk about sort of our understanding of it. And then we wanted to talk about the term pre-read text. What does that mean? Why is it called a pre-read yeah. media take? So, yeah. And don't this... worry, none of you have to read anything for this. No, it's fine. 
Um, but yeah, we basically heard this term through the YouTuber Rowan Ellis, who makes um, queer feminist um, like analytical videos on YouTube. YouTube essays. Yeah, YouTube essays. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, she sort of coined the term. Um, quick definition for her studies yeah for her studies when she was at university um and we just thought it was a really brilliant term but um basically a period text is a book which has been become so ingrained in our cultural consciousness that the general public will often never have actually read it yet will have a strong sense of what it is about and will also have a clear idea of images characters and concepts that arise within it which might in fact but bear only a passing resemblance to the original material sorry i copied this from a transcript which is why it's slightly choppy this is often achieved through adaptations, with each new film or TV show beginning a narrative and visual discourse of previous versions until what has been created likely has much more of a connection with the other adaptations than the original book itself. So what all of that means is that yeah, even so though you've definition. never read, you've never probably read Dracula, most people haven't, you know what Dracula looks like because of our understanding of what that mm. is, even though most of us, even if we have an understanding of a vampire or something, we don't actually know like the text that it was based on yeah. Dr. Jack oh sorry I was say Dr. Jack or Mr. Hyde um, that's yeah it. it is Dr. Jack oh it Hyde. is yeah yeah. for example we have a certain image of for example Sherlock we have an example we have an idea of what he looks like what he dresses as mm -hmm. and so we have certain associations with images or like Frankenstein um, yes. and also like the fact that like Frankenstein has become synonymous with the monster yes. and like the idea of like Frankenstein with like bolts his neck and like green I think that came from like some like uh, movie like it was the original probably yeah yeah because i mean like if you read actually if you've read frankenstein like i have um you'll know <laughs> yeah. that yeah he's not like described as particularly green or i don't think he has bolts in his neck either like he's just sort of i'm not sure how much he is described anyway like the idea yeah. is that we have an understanding of a lot of images and a lot of um icons and figures mm -hmm. and storylines and we don't even know where those storylines necessarily come from yeah and we don't need to have read, uh, read the original story in order to understand it because it's been sort of adapted so many ways like Lily just mentioned there's been so many adaptations and that sort of shapes our understanding of something but that can also yeah. distort yes. what that actually was originally meant to be like you said like the whole, uh, whole idea like changing like the skin color or like bolts and neck that can have huge implications like what that means later on even though that was not the intent of like the original author of something yeah I'm pretty sure I mean Rowan Ellis said she couldn't find anything like this is just a term she made up I'm pretty sure yeah. I have read something from like adaptation theory from a module because I take English literature and I did a Shakespeare module um, last year on like adaptations of Shakespeare and I think we did read something that wasn't quite the same thing but also talked about kind of how our understandings are like shaped by like a cultural consciousness um, which I could find maybe I should have found that for this episode whatever <laughs> who, who cares we got like Rowan Ellis's definition so this uh, this podcast is not going to be too academic at all yeah, no. this is us talking about movies going to be our angle into yeah. this is to talk about like what are our preconceived notions of I don't know, pirates or vampires or whatever movie we're going to talk about. Like, I don't know, in a rom-com, what do we expect the heroine mm. to do in this moment? Because we always know that this is what happens in that moment in that movie. And how does it make me so much changed in the movie? How do they try to sort of mm. uh, screw with your <laughs> preconceptions about what is meant to happen next? Yeah. And that is going to be sort of our... And, in point no yeah, uh, yeah entry, entry point, point. Entry point. Yeah, yeah into the story and also it works quite well for like us personally because um, Anna introduced me to this whole concept that I'd never thought of before which was not watching a trailer for something because <laughs> um, I always do that and then you watch the film and you're a little bit disappointed or you kind of don't have the freshness that you really want from it because you've they've fit all the really good jokes into the trailer or they tell you exactly what's going to happen and then you watch the film and you're like oh it's just a longer version of the trailer that's disappointing <laughs> yeah. why did i spend money on this um but yeah anna doesn't do that <laughs> so i am a huge film nerd and i have been since i got a library card um, <laughs> and since i have had access to a computer because my parents didn't have one for a very long time and then i only had to very yeah. anna's a millennial i'm gen z so oh, that's yeah, why <laughs> yeah that's another important thing you should know about us the yeah. generation difference is real yeah <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Sorry, Lily didn't know who Dick Cheney was. <laughs> she didn't grow up with that dude being on the news every night. <laughs> um, sorry, was this a is very a random child. example. <laughs> no, but I grew up with um, a huge love for movies, and I just love to like get different DVDs and just watch them at home, and that's how I also learned English, to be honest. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, because I'm Bavarian and she's British. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I learned English, and... 
I just loved it so much, but I just would randomly just watch anything that sort of spoke to me just mm. based on the DVD color, which is again a preconception of what I think Ooh, the movie's about. God, right? So like it's not like a I'm so sorry for the background noise. <laughs> People are having fun, so that's Yeah, good. it's a fun summer night. Yeah. We love it. And it was really hot today, so I'm so glad that it's, like, cooling down. Yeah. <laughs> we were outside because our kitchen was just too warm. <laughs> We've had ice cream already. We've had beer. We're having a great time. Yeah. I was I was treated to lovely ice cream. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks um, for the beer. Yeah. <laughs> so I started watching so, so many movies, and I really loved so many of them, and I had such different experience with so many of them. And then, because of Internet and IMDb, I got really obsessed with, like, watching the newest trailers and, like, every scene that was put online to, like, promote the film. I was always like, oh my god, I need to watch yeah. all of these. IMDb, made in Bristol, by the way. Um, <laughs> nice. Hometown shout out. <laughs> yeah, shout out to, yeah, to Bristol. My love. Yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, very important fact. And I got really obsessed by it, but then I would, especially I think with comedies, but not just comedies, I would just then watch the actual movie. And I was just, for years, I was so disappointed by so many movies that I watched, especially new ones. And I would just watch them and sort of think like, well, this wasn't great. Yeah. I don't know why you yeah. thought this was going to be fantastic. We also can talk about our understanding of expectations of movies and what they do to us Ooh. in terms of what that does with yes. the quality of the film. I will say because sometimes I would watch these movies like years later and I would think, it was fine, like it wasn't bad. And I think that's because we have a certain understanding of what the movie's gonna be about. And obviously they tried to put as much in the trailer and that's gonna make you pay for a ticket, right? So just they tend to take jokes away from you and you just don't yeah. see the setup. Oh, and it's so it's just so frustrating. When they yeah. put the best parts in the in the trailer and then you watch it and you're like, Oh, this one's gonna be great and then it's just not fresh anymore and then there's nothing bad. it's like they put the best bits in there so there's like nothing as good to look forward to and you just end up really disappointed and feeling hollow inside and you're like yeah. why did I do this to myself and you just sit there and you're like <laughs> because you've already seen the joke like five times because if you're like me you've already seen the trailer five times and so I just decided one day to just stop watching trailers like this sounds very sort of just, it sounds yeah. very pretentious but I literally just did this for myself so I could like enjoy movies again and once I did I really 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 enjoyed life. movies again yeah because I was, a friend of mine took me to this place called Bebok in Berlin, which is an art space, and we watched a movie that was made, like the director was there, it was like I think made in the 70s, and it was of, about the Turkish immigrant experience in Germany, and I just expected it to be about that, and that ended up being like a feminist film. I need to go into movies thinking about the fact that I don't need to know anything about it. Yeah. I just need to like go in and let them tell me a story yeah. and don't think too much about it. Oh, like, I'll tell you what my experience of this was kind of vaguely recently. It oh, was great. Yes. watching, um, so it was like International Women's Day, I think like a couple of years ago, my university back at home has like a student cinema um, and they were kind of doing a showing um, of um, a girl walks home alone at night. Ooh. Yeah. And I had no, like, my friend was just like, oh, but you want to watch this film? And I was like, oh, sure. Like, I hadn't seen a trailer. I knew, like, nothing about what it was going to be about at all. I think she was like, oh, it's kind of vaguely horror. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I don't really like horror, but I'll go along anyway. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Like, that's such a good, that's like one of my favorite films. Like, oh, I is. love it so much. And I think it just helped so much. I had no idea yeah, what it was going to be really about. Helpful. I had, like, no clue. I went in and I was like, this is, a, like, and I didn't know where it was going to go. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect and just like yeah not knowing and just letting the story like unfold and it's got such a good soundtrack as well and it's so beautiful and just so well it's just so so much about that <laughs> film I love so much so yeah yeah I think that's interesting because when you said horror films because I think also I went into Get Out not really knowing what it was about Ooh, just yeah. everybody just told me and because I also don't like horror films I was like I don't want to watch this and everybody was like no you need to watch it just watch it mm. but I, I wasn't told anything else and it wasn't so much about when I'm talking about the pre-read conceptions about these movies I'm talking about I'm not talking about spoilers so much, but I think maybe that's also part of it. Yeah. But they do sort of spoil the movie for you when they sort of like tell you like this is like the storyline and this the is a romantic to comedy. Expect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, the way yeah. that movies are sort of like advertised to us, we just assume to expect this thing and either it doesn't live up to that at all, it sort of feels weird. But when you go in with just like a blank slate of just I'm just gonna enjoy this, whatever this is, or just gonna let it tell me a story. Yeah. I mean, you just have so much more fun with it. And like Get Out was one of those experiences where I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. But like, I'm so glad I didn't know anything about it. I just heard that it was like great and like short and peel. And I was like, I don't know what that means in terms of like a horror film, but sure. Another movie where I had this experience was Widows. So Widows, I always heard about through like Viola Davis. So it was always talked about as 
oh my god this is gonna be her next oscar and da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and i just assumed because of that it was gonna be like a very gritty sort of like relationship drama or something and i didn't know anything about it and i also didn't check up on it the woman who wrote gone girl co-wrote it with steve mcqueen and i didn't know it was gonna be like this amazing and great action thriller <laughs> and i just didn't expect that and it was just so fantastic just as a film and as someone who like because every time you say you like movies a um, dude will tell you which movies to like no dude has ever brought up this movie to me once and that's i think a crime frankly <laughs> because no one has ever like mentioned that movie to me when they talked about like action thrillers mm. i'm like it's got liam neeson in it and you don't know this film like <laughs> you will never shut up about all we these to talk about this film about like, like bro films but yeah. like you've never like none of these dudes have ever brought up widows to me and it's just a great action thriller but i think that because of the way that it was sort of sold it sort mm. of had these expectations of i was like I, I i didn't watch it because it was like i don't really feel like i need to watch like a relationship break apart right now yeah i just you know i just didn't feel like watching it and then i just I watched, like watched a heavy it. oscar film yeah like, oh no i was like I, I need to be like in the right mood for that over the i will watch anything other than like horror films i'm like yeah. please yeah. let me sleep <laughs> But when I watched it, I was like, this is amazing. And again, why doesn't every dude who like loves action movies not love this movie and talk about it no uh, nonstop? So yeah, in general, I just think we wanted to talk about in this uh, context, just what kind of assumptions are made for us mm. as well in terms of like being sold a product as opposed to just us being able to just enjoy films. Yeah. Uh, just on like more general terms. So when we're making this podcast, we are trying to be like mindful of our language. And so kind of moving away from using ableist terms like crazy kind of trying to say what we mean like being more specific with our language which is also just in general just more helpful because yeah. you actually are more eloquent is not the right word ironically enough but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just more specific it's more accurate yeah. yeah recently we've been talking about the term cancelling for example it doesn't really ever mean what you specifically want it to mean because it's just got such a broad it usage covers now. so many things and it's been kind of co-opted to mean a load of different stuff yeah. um yeah and also especially I, yeah. by the right yeah so like yeah accuracy and also just respecting people as well yeah. so yeah um we're very open to like learning and we'll try and do our own learning in terms of language as well yeah also in terms of terms like because i identify as queer like i'm going to be using certain terms in the context that i want them to if you like hear us use a word where you're like actually i have a different opinion on this like i find this to be problematic because abc Mm -hmm. If you are willing to educate us for free on that, yeah, absolutely, please, please, uh, always open. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you have any ideas for movies that you would like us to do, yes. by all means, please tell us. We could do. We have a Twitter. We have we, an Instagram. Uh, yeah. You can find us at Liliana Pod on Twitter and on Instagram. It's L I L I and Anna with two N's and then just P O D. Two two letters. Two le like. <laughs> our, both our names have like two letters in them which is yeah. just fantastic and then pod um yeah <laughs> not uh, a lot of diversity in letters in our... <laughs> we want to have guests in we the future. do want to have guests in the future i actually sorry i'm bringing this up now could we have my friend lucy on the podcast maybe the to talk black about sales black sales yeah because yes, of course she would i'm sure she'd love to do that so lucy also at some point if we there. talk about like some book that's going to be adapted because loretta reads a lot yes let's have loretta we'll on the book <laughs> i want to meet your friend yeah okay Yes, we would love to have both of these people. <laughs> if they listen to this yeah. podcast, they're going to be like, what? We have not consulted them, <laughs> but we have decided... Uh... <laughs> Um, yes. Would so you like, yeah, sorry. Would you like to be a guest on this podcast? <laughs> Write to us at. Yeah, by all means. It's literally Liliana's pre read mediatek at hotmail.com. There we go. So, one of the sort of like longer series we're going to do in this podcast, this is not going to be our main thing. We're going to talk about movies and TV shows, whatever we want to. But weirdly enough, I think because Ron Ellis just got started, sort of. Yeah. But <laughs> I just randomly. Um, Ron Ellis made a really great video about sort of like if you got disappointed by Game of Thrones ending, this is a television show you should watch. And we both then started watching Black Sails oh sort of simultaneously, yeah. although not like at the same speed. Because yes, I watched it like very quickly, and then I took about like two of. months to finish it. And you were like, "Are you, you done with it yet? Like, can we talk about this?" Yeah, there's this twist and spoilers. I just was like, "Yeah." Whenever she said she was like, up to this episode, I was like, "I don't know what that means. Like, what happened in the story?" Um, <laughs> So we sort of fought our way through the first season, which was a little bit harder, mm. and then it just got, it got significantly better just, and better and better. Uh, yeah, cumulatively better. There's a word exponentially. Exponentially, yes. 
maths I did terms. take maths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we so we fought our way through the first season, and then just it gets exponentially better and better and better. And we want to talk about that show in very much detail. But those episodes are going to be like Black Sales episodes, yeah. and we are going to talk about a lot of movies. Yeah, yeah. But we do encourage anybody, please do yourself a favor yeah. and watch Black Sales. It, it deserves so much more appreciation, yes. that show. And it also, more people, it means more talking about it, which yes. is just always a win. And I yeah. just want to see more fan fiction. I want to see more fan oh, art. Yes. I want more discussion. I want more points being made about everything. Yeah, more Tumblr essays, please. Yes, I love please. reading those. Yes, same. <laughs> more edits more yeah more everything please yeah um we are also going to so for example if we talk about like a movie about Sherlock Holmes we wanted to sort of talk about our notions about Sherlock Holmes like means to us what we sort of had different interpretations of it because grow back in different countries yes separate we have by an, water wow we have yeah a glo- not a global perspective we have like two people from two different countries in Europe <laughs> whenever people say international and then it's always like I love when people like say like this is international and then you look it up it's like Germany and Austria and you're like, like yeah sure. England and Wales like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we do have like a different perspective because we did grow up with different cultures and different languages I think is very important mm. but for example with like black sales again you don't have to have read this book we talked about this in the beginning it's not really about like you doing the homework now um, but it is like a prequel to Treasure Island but again, you don't need any understanding of Treasure no, Island. That's the be- that's the beauty. That's yeah. We we'll talk more about black cells yes. in our black cells. Yeah, much we have more in plenty detail. to say. But yeah. yes. But when we talk about like um, Sherlock Holmes, for example, we're going to talk about our different understandings of Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Like, what did you grow up with? For me, it was a manga. For example, <laughs> that I grew up with. Um, in terms of like my understanding of Sherlock Holmes and less sort of the movies I think the first Sherlock Holmes movie I ever saw was like a movie where like Sherlock Holmes is not intelligent but Watson is for example so it was already like Uh, yeah already the subversion of the tropes you watch the like yeah the subversed version although I couldn't tell you for the life of me what that movie's called I think that's Michael Caine in it I think I've heard of it yeah I'm not sure I, I think I'm Anyway, yeah, but our different understandings of things. In case you are German, you might know German movie titles tend to be unbelievably cringy and sort of the uh, just unbelievably strange puns which aren't funny, and it just yeah usually makes no sense. And if it's a rom com, it's always like someone with obstacles, love with obstacles, break up with obstacles, <laughs> and just also how that sort of determines our understanding of movies. But yes, but that's also just going to be in terms of whatever specific media we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. That's not going to be like we're not going to attribute all of these different theories every single time. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about a mixture of stuff. But yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So so yes. join us. So our setup for the podcast is going to be, we are going to talk about whatever media we're going to talk about. We're going to break it down in terms of plot as short as possible. And then we're just going to dig in and talk about it, hopefully with fun guests. Yes. Um, <laughs> whatever we end up talking about in that specific episode. And uh, we're going to talk about it from our feminist queer lens. And then we're going to end our first, like our pilot. Oh my God, the pilot. <laughs> right now, yeah. Um, as we're going to do every episode, hopefully also with guests with recommendations. Um, and I wanted to talk about something that I did not... Um, also, the reason why this sort of connects to Black Sales is that we were both really annoyed that no one had ever told us about Black Sales before. <laughs> when we finally watched it, we were sort of like, how does... I don't remember this anyone ever bringing this show up to me. What is this? <laughs> and I wanted to talk about a show that I wish someone's told me about before, although it's not that old, so it's not, you know, like... <laughs> 10 years behind the trend but it's a Korean television show called My Mister it's got great actors in it it's an amazing story it ends up not really being sort of like this romance genre which I thought it was going to be and I just need more people talking about this show and by all means give me recommendations for more Korean dramas because I'm really really (laughs) gone down in that rabbit hole and I'm really enjoying myself so yes that's my recommendations watch My Mister in Germany it's right now on Netflix yeah I did not prepare for this segment of the show. <laughs> so I'm watching WandaVision at the moment. You may have heard of this show. It's from this really niche um, studio, uh, Mar- Marvel, I think I think it's called. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've heard of this show, but uh, yeah, I'd give it a watch. They do some interesting stuff with genre. I don't know if you've heard give about this Give an underdog well. a chance. Yeah, give an underdog a chance. Like, just trust me on this one. Like, it might just be my opinion that, like, you know, it's, it's kind of almost as niche as black sales, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, <laughs> I'll come up with a better recommendation for next time. But it's good. I'm enjoying it. Uh, yeah. Oh, we need a sign out. We don't have a sign out. What is our sign out? We can end with another joke, perhaps. Oh, God. Okay. Or, yeah. 
We could try that anyway. Yes, sure. Send us your bad jokes, your dad <laughs> jokes, your dad jokes and your bad jokes. Especially if they're pirate related. Yes, we're always we need open. so many. Yes. yes. So whatever we talk about, if you mention an article or something, we're going to put the link in the description and we're also going to put like the tiny like recommendation, just like the things that we yeah. mentioned in the description. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out below. Also, our um, social media handles and our email address is also going to be in there because you want to contact us. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Please do. God, this is horrible. Okay. <laughs> People always ask me how I sneak chocolate into the cinema. Well, I've got a few twigs up my sleeve. <laughs> oh, that's got this horrible that's so <laughs> <laughs> It's not even so bad that it's scared, it's just bad. And on that note.